Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to, or I should say good evening, I guess. We are going to go ahead and roll into our post-race press conferences for today's GEICO 500. We've now been joined by team owner Richard Childers of Richard Childers Racing and the team owner for driver Kyle Bush. So, Richard, uh, congratulations on another win. Um, tell us a little bit about those final laps from, from your vantage point. Well, I think my stomach was in knots and not as bad as uh, uh, the crew chief there. <laughs> Randall was just, man, you pit, pit. And he, Kyle said, look, we've done made this deal. We've done made our decision. Let's ride it out no matter what. And so they just stayed out. And we all was so, we were on the border of running out of fuel. And I was just holding my breath. And uh, it wasn't going to be fun if we run out of fuel. But it was a good day, a great day. Great crowd. One of the best crowds I understand at Talladega since, uh, Dale Jr. won in 2008, I think it was, or the last one that he won. All right, we're going to go ahead and take questions for Richard. If you have a question for Richard, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll work to get a mic to you. And who would like to kick us off here this, F this evening? All right, we'll go to Jenna and then Bob. Congratulations, RC. Your 13th win here at Talladega, second only to Hendrick. Um, I imagine you love this place. You, you know, what does it feel like to win at Talladega? Because it's such a difficult place to win. It's, you know, it's, it's such an important win. If you win at Talladega, so much can happen during the race. But Talladega has been so great to RC. I raced here in 1969. That was one of the biggest breaks I got. I left here with about fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. Thought I'd never have to work again, and here I am, still racing. So uh, Talladega's been great. Winning with Dale here and uh, the Winston, and I uh, guess it was two thousand was the last win for for him here. I think he's helping us build RCR back to where we want to be. Uh, I got to give all the credit to Austin Dillon. He's the one that came to me and said uh, he knew that Tyler was going somewhere else. And he said, uh, Pop, Pop, what do you think about bringing uh, Kyle Bush over here? I said, I'll talk to him if he wants to. And we sat down, put a program together. So the credit goes to Austin for bringing him on. All right, we're going to go to Bob. Bob Hockers, Fox Sports. You talk about Austin. How do you keep that team from not maybe getting into desperation mode? Which, which part? Of, which team? The, on Austin's team, considering how far back in their points, looking at the playoffs. Obviously, last year they win the last race to get in, so they know what they're doing. They know the kind of the situation. But is there anything that you do or want them to do to kind of avoid being maybe in desperation mode? Well. You know, you, you start the season out in desperation mode, and that's the way we always look at this uh, deal. But he knows now he's got a win, and we know we got to get a win for him, so we'll be uh, digging extra hard to get him there. We, those 60 points, we got an appeal, and uh, I feel we got a decent chance. You know, I don't know who the uh, panel will be, but that'll be who will decide it, and uh, I think we got a decent chance. All right, we're going to go to Dustin and then Jeff, and then we'll work our way over here. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Uh, Richard, obviously you've been in this long enough. You've seen the, the highs and lows, and there's been some great years for you guys, and there have been some years where in some way, ways you couldn't get out of your own way. Um, you guys have had some struggles in recent years, but now when you go back to last season, you guys have won six of the last 29 races. You've won 20% of the cup races. Uh, I'm not, I don't know if you're going to say that you're back or you consider yourself back, but what does it mean to be more of a player than what you had been for a, a number of years on a consistent basis? Yeah, thank you, Dustin. That's a good question. Uh, you know, racing is like life. There's peaks and valleys. And when you get in a, on a peak, it's harder to stay there. You've got to be prepared when you're on a, uh, at the top. We've been there. We've also been in the valley, the very bottom, and you got to work harder and have the right drive and emotion to put you up to the top. And that's what we've worked hard to get there. It's took a long road, so it's been a fun deal. What does it mean to you personally? You've Me personally, uh, it, it means a lot because I've, uh, I'm still doing this. People say, why do you do it? 
if you see all those fans up there, that's why we do it, and we're all in this for uh, for that reason. We got some great partners that we've been involved with, Chevy, Bass Pro, so many of them over the years, and uh, it's just long-term partnerships drive you. And our crew chief, Randall Burnett. <laughs> Can you we... breathe yet? Yes. <laughs> I was going to say we've also been I joined by our race reading crew chief, Randall Burnett. Go ahead, Jeff. A, a lot of people, Richard, you know, dread coming to, to this place, and, and obviously it's, it's been good to you over the years. So why do you, why do you think it's been good to you? What, what is it about this place? You know, I, back even when I was driving, they used to say it was an Indian burial ground. I, I don't know if many of y'all remember that, but it was always supposed to be the ghost of, of uh, Talladega to be here. But uh, I've just always shook it off and, and just enjoyed it. I love racing here as a driver. I love being an owner here. And uh, I, I just get, we've had some great runs, get great wins. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited about the future of RCR, Kyle, Austin, the whole team. All right. I'm sorry about that. I lost my track here. Steve, over here. Thank you. Steve Conley, the podium finish. Uh, Richard, it's been 15 races for Kyle to, uh, since he's won here. It's been 22 for you back since uh, Clint Boyer won here in 2011. Did you have wonders if uh, you would ever get back to victory lane? Or, uh, I mean, did you see this as being kind of one of those, it's just going to be a battle? Talladega is always a battle of survival. That's that's what the battle really is, is if you can be there at the end, you got a chance to win. And that's what we wanted to do. And that's always our goal here in Daytona. you got to be there at the end. Both drivers talked about coming out here and racing, racing as hard as we kid, could, and and they did. And it was a, it was a good day for one, and, and Austin didn't have that good a day. He was involved in that crash. But uh, Talladega will give you that. It will give you the peaks and valleys. And Randall, um, obviously the uh, the pitch strategy, a uh, uh, big question. What does it mean to you to be on the box to have your driver say, "Hey, this is what we're doing. I've got I've got control. I know what I'm doing out here." Well, it's uh, it's hugely helpful, um, you know, for him to buy into what we're what we're doing. The communications there. Hey, man, this is where we're at in the race. This is this is what we got going on. Um, for him to, to understand that and process that and, and do everything he can to help us along the ways is, is uh, you know, huge for us and, and how we play our strategy. All right, we're going to come up front to Ben White. Uh, ben White, Fayetteville Observer. For both Richard and the crew chief here, um, so the opposite side of that is can you look at Talladega Super Speedway and say, okay, if we need a trump card, if we need something great to happen, can you come to Talladega and say maybe this is where things turn around for us because it is so unpredictable? Can you can you both address that? Well, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's a nice shot in the arm for us, honestly. Um, you know, we we kind of hung out, and tried to stay out of trouble all day, and, and everybody was kind of along the same lines, of, of just being conscious of how much fuel they were using and all that. And um, you know, we've came off a, a rough three or four races for us. Um, you know, so uh, to be able to come back out and, and win this race, when it's it's good for everybody on the team, get a good shot in the arm, and and really looking forward to going back to some of these mile and a half tracks and, and kind of getting back to the meat and potatoes of the schedule and uh, seeing what we got there. Um, we've obviously got some work to do on our short track stuff, um, you know, so that'll give us a little bit of a break and, and realign on that and come back and see what we got and for Richard the same thing I mean you've seen a lot of races that you addressed ups and downs at Talladega but I mean you've seen a lot that you thought okay we're not going to win and then suddenly there you are and can you just address that also the optimism of coming to Talladega yeah like I said earlier you know it's all about survival here one thing to put yourself uh, in a position to win and all day long Kyle just he sat there in that bottom line when some other lines was moving, it just kept moving up, moving up. Pit strategy, the calls that Randall made there for the amount of fuel, uh, saving fuel to use less fuel to get you out in front of them, all that paid off, and that's what it takes. All right, do we have any questions in the press box for Richard? All right, any final questions for Richard downstairs? All right, Richard, I'll go ahead and let you go. Congratulations again on that win.
Thank you, and I'm going to go celebrate it with my friend uh, J.P. Uh, Morris and Johnny Morris and all the friends at Bass Pro because we're going turkey hunting tomorrow. <laughs> so thank you all. <laughs> all right. Any final questions for Randall upstairs in the press box? All right. We'll come back downstairs for Randall. Questions? Okay. We'll go to Jenna. Hey Randall, what happened on the um, on the final sequence when you called Kyle in for gas? Was when did you make the decision? He said it was too late. If you could just walk us through that. Yeah, we were we'd had the talk uh, when the first caution came out there at like uh, 184, 185, and I'm like, hey man, we're 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 going to be in a bad spot here possibly if we get too many green white checkers. And he was like, well, let, let's try to give it a go the first one and uh see what happens and so he was fully aware and he was aggressively saving his fuel and doing everything he could he knew the situation at that point um and so i saw a couple of them getting ready to duck off in front of us and they were kind of in the same fuel situation we were well there was a bunch of us but um i just called honestly i called it too late and, and it was a fortunate mistake you know what i mean um we just uh we kind of lucked out there and he saved enough under those cautions to to make it to the end i think you know the caution coming out on the white flag lap there, you know, who knows if we'd have ran all the way to the end, we, we might not have made it. So, um, you know, just kind of kind of better be good, uh, lucky than good at that point. And I, I'm curious, um, 11 races with him. Um, he, he's a unique talent. He's temperamental. He, but he, you know, you, you never know what you're going to get. How has it been working with him? What, what have you enjoyed? What have you had to adapt to? Well, it's been it's been great. I mean, his. Uh, <clears throat> His ability speaks for itself, obviously, um, what he knows about the cars and, and the strategy and just how the race plays out and, and what he needs in a car and um, all that's just hugely helpful. And I think it, you know, it helps me be better, be more detailed and really be on top of my game um, because he's going to challenge you if you're not. And so, you know, I think everybody at our, on the eight team has really stepped it up in that manner. And... Uh, you know, I think I think it's been good so far. I think everything's been great. We've we've got a good relationship. We communicate a lot, and and we communicate well. And and I think that's that shows. All right, Bob. I'm Bob Packers, Fox Sports. Kyle hasn't won at one of these tracks in a points race in a in a long time. I'm curious when you guys talk about these the style of racing. Does he tell you that he's good, or does he tell you that he hasn't won in over a decade? Well, no, honestly, when he got there, um, you know, that was one of the one of the big things that he wanted to, to get with Derek on. Um, he knows Derek's had some success, um, our spotter Derek, and he he came over and he's like, man, I tell you what, I've really struggled at these places. He's like, I don't know what it is about my approach or, or what we do, um, but I've struggled at, at these uh, super speedway tracks. So he, uh, he was very uh, interested to see how, you know, Derek goes about approaching his day and, and how that communication goes. And they spent a lot of time over the winter talking about it and, and listening to tape and, and doing all that. And I think it paid off. Obviously, we're in a great spot at the 500. It was really fast there all weekend and, um, you know, just kind of missed out on, on winning that one, got wadded up at the end. But, um obviously put ourselves in position there as well. So uh, I think their relationship's really good. I think uh, uh, Kyle's put a lot of trust in Derek at these places, and I think it, and it's been paying off. All right, we'll go to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, Randall, since you guys won with Tyler at Road America, you guys have won five races among the two drivers, which is more than any other car number has won in that period. Now, I know that you would tell me you probably got you had two talented drivers, but it still also takes a team. How has the team been able to, how have you been able to build this team to where when you have the talent, you can take advantage? And again, you, as a car number, you guys have won more races since that Road America than anybody else in the garage. Yeah, I mean, this this A team, it's strong. Um, the, the road crew guys, they're all racers. They've grown up racing. Um, you know, we've got great engineers. Like this team's really strong, and they're they're we're really close, really really connected. Um, we've spent the last you know three or four years together, um, all, all through Tyler's uh, coming up through the Cup side, and and then now with Kyle, and 
um, everybody's really dedicated. Everybody wants to come out and win races, and, and everybody works hard, and they, they pull their weight, and, and they take, you know, their responsibility for the, their part in it, and um, it just makes a great team. Um, you know, and then obviously we've, we've had, we've been fortunate enough to have two very talented drivers. Like you said, you know, Tyler's, a, a incredible talent, um, you know, and now we got Kyle and he, his resume speaks for itself. So, um, just very fortunate to, to have those kind of caliber of drivers drive the car and, and for our team to stay, stay close knit and, and work as hard as they do. It's, it's been, you know, it's been great. Yeah, and, and you know, it's one of those deals. We we missed a lot of opportunities when Tyler was driving a car. We finished second. I don't know how many times. Um, you know, and just you just gotta. Everybody sees that and they taste that and they want it, right? And it, and it's not hard when you're running up front. It's not hard to keep everybody motivated. It's when you're struggling and and things aren't going right. It's it's tough to keep everybody pulling together in the same direction. So. Um, you know, fortunately, like last year, we had a we had a lot of fast cars all year long, and and Tyler did a great job, and we finally figured out how to break that barrier. Um, and once we did, you know, it, it started working out better for us. And and Kyle's came aboard, and he he's been great to work with, and you know, he's he's a proven winner many times over. So um, just to be able to get him in the car and, and us to kind of adapt to him and him to adapt to us, we've kind of found a good middle road, I think, and and looking forward to getting to more of these tracks. All right. Any final questions for Randall? All right. Congratulations again on that win.